This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Sales of new cars and trucks in the U.S. were down sharply in October compared to last year. In fact, they were even down compared to September. But there is a glimmer of hope. Ward's intelligence reports that the SAR was slightly better in October than the month before. Even with tight inventory due to the chip shortage, automakers still managed to sell over 1 million new vehicles. Some automakers even managed to increase sales. Ford, Jaguar Land Rover, Nissan, and Volkswagen were up from September. While General Motors only reports sales on a quarterly basis, a source tells us it also had a good month. We're comparing month over month instead of year over year because it's more indicative of what's happening in the market right now. Sales of passenger cars not only fell, they fell to what may be their lowest level of market share in the history of the U.S. industry. Sedans, coupes, hatchbacks, and station wagons fell below 20% market share. Or to put it another way, only one out of five vehicles sold was a passenger car because customers continued to move into trucks, crossovers, vans, and SUVs. Sales of electric cars were up, even though Tesla, which dominates the segment, saw its sales drop by double digits. But don't read too much into that drop. Tesla always backloads its sales to the end of the quarter, and then they drop off the month after that. So they were up in September and down in October, and we probably will not see another increase until December. And with Tesla sales down, traditional automakers made a little bit of progress in the electric segment. The top five non-Tesla EVs were the Mustang Mach-E, Volkswagen ID.4, Hyundai Kona, Nissan Leaf, and Kia Nero. And we may as well throw the Porsche Taycan into the mix because it was right on the heels of the Kia Nero. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. We don't always make a news story out of the pricing for individual models, but when they're really popular and have a strong fan base, we do. So here's the pricing of the new Honda Civic Si. A little over $28,000, including destination charges. And there's only one option, a $200 set of summer tires. BTW, that's $2,000 more than the previous Si. Jeep just created its first studio ever that will only work on graphics, especially for the aftermarket. The studio will make custom hood graphics and fender and shifter inserts. Prices range from only $40 to $165, and they carry a five or seven year warranty. Aftermarket accessories like this can be very profitable, and graphic upgrades can keep products fresh in the eyes of consumers. You know, back in the 1950s and 60s, automakers had the annual styling change. Who knows? Maybe we're going to see that turn into the annual graphics change. And speaking of aftermarket parts, when Ford revealed that it's coming out with an electric crate motor called the Illuminator, we said it probably would appeal to a lot of classic car owners who want to convert their ride to electric. Well, we were right. Ford converted a classic 1978 F100 pickup to electric with two crate motors that came right out of a Mach-E GT. Each motor retails for just under four grand and produces 281 horsepower. And you heard us right, that truck was called the F100. Here's the history. The F100 name was first used in 1953 on the second generation of the F-Series and that ran all the way until 1983. The F-150 was introduced in 1975 as a more capable version of the F-100, and that allowed Ford to skate around some emission regulations at the time. Hey you, put out that cigarette or Bosch is going to bust you.
That's right. Bosch developed a smoke detector for car sharing vehicles, especially autonomous ones. It's a little black box that attaches to the windshield. So if a customer lights up in a car, the black box notifies the fleet manager so the car can be cleaned out and aired out before someone else gets in it. Because cigarette smell is a major complaint with ride sharing. That same sensor can also detect if a vehicle gets dinged, dented, or scratched. So that little black box helps fleet customers get their cars fixed fast and keeps their customers happy. Or at least the ones that don't smoke. Have you heard about the auto ISAC? It's all about fighting cyber attacks in the automotive industry. ISAC stands for Information Sharing and Assessment Center. And the auto ISAC is all about automakers and suppliers in the U.S. banding together to share what kinds of attacks they faced and how they combated them. By sharing this information, these companies learn from one another, which makes them much more effective against black hats. I was recently invited to moderate a panel at the Auto ISAC conference, and we recorded that for an AutoLine This Week episode. Here's a bit of a flavor of how that went, and I started out by asking Al Adams from General Motors what kind of attacks they're seeing. As it relates to the automotive industry, certainly we've seen uh, attacks and threat actors uh, impact, uh, especially IT systems of, of companies. We've seen uh, some uh, activity in OT systems as well, in, in the manufacturing systems. Uh, we haven't seen a lot uh, in the product space. However, what we always prescribe to is, is a, a mindset of not if, but when. Stephen McKnight is from Stellantis, and I asked him what kind of steps they go through when they realize they've been hacked. DEF CON 5 could happen. However, we've been fortunate to this point where you know, the call comes in, we start the investigation. And we start the investigation with those same security engineers that were there during design. And what does this vehicle look like? What controls do we have in place? And how possibly could one of those controls have failed? Or a new threat scenario has developed and, you know, we've got to take that into consideration. And I asked Bob Castor from Bosch if automakers are going to need new technology to be able to fight cyber criminals in the future. The car from 2030 will look very different from a car from 2021. So the, as we're getting more connected and more leverage in our, um, in our, in our, what the products can, or the modules can do in the car, that it is new technology that we're, we're developing to support it. But as, as Steve had said, that the, the basic tools that we're using are, are understood. It's the uh, application of them. Instead of having a big computer, you have a, a small microcontroller inside your airbag or braking controller that you're trying to put security into something that's very different than putting it into your PC. If you'd like more information, you can watch that entire show on our website or our YouTube channel. And we also invite you to join us for AutoLine After Hours tomorrow when our guest will be Dan Cook, the CEO of Lighten, that company that could have game-changing EV battery technology. Do they really have game-changing technology? Well, you're going to have to tune in and judge for yourself. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. Solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems. Over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Magna.